Sup everyone, this is Carrick from ACG, and today I'm bringing you the review for the follically challenged father of Garot gameplay. That's right, Hitman, baby. Listen, I've been a fan of the Hitman titles since the first time I found out I could hide my ballers in someone's Chinese food delivery, which sounds far dirtier than it actually is. You know, in the past, Hitman has hit some and missed some, but now we lose the subtitle and gain the somewhat questionable term episodic. Let's see how Hitman fared in the Switch, shall we? This title's 15 bucks, and for that it includes the prologue and this new Paris level I'll be covering today. Additionally, locations that will come out later will be 10 bucks with the full title priced at the normal 60 if you want to get it that way. As always, if you like the video, eh, maybe subscribe. So here's the review for Hitman, emaciated runway model killers, toilet bowl assassination hijinks, and the world's quickest case of rigor mortis. Let's do this. Graphics are up first. I have to say, the game really does actually look good with a smattering of various post-processing effects and excellent use of lighting to delineate different locations within the game's levels. Now, I am playing the PS4 version. Of course, the PC version will probably look better depending on how much power you throw at it. The game also has a hard time staying at a steady frame per second, resulting in the occasional stutter when spinning or when everyone in a room suddenly realizes that that six foot six bald Obi-Wan Kenobi they just passed through security is actually the bad guy. Also, the anti-aliasing that the game uses has a shimmering effect in various locations, and I assume that's just a lack of temporal anti-aliasing. It's a trade-off, less jaggies, but in certain conditions people look like Michael Landon in Highway to Heaven. Animations, movement, and gunplay are all handled well enough, though gunplay still feels like a red-headed stepchild of the bunch, and I guess rightfully so. While I love the lethality of the guns in Hitman, as bad guys crumple to their death only after a couple hits, resulting in some hilarious ragdolls, it never takes front and center, which makes sense when you really think about it. I really do feel like there's a sandwich of improvement here of texture work, architecture, and lighting, though texture work sees the largest improvement. Now, while the beta showed us fairly condensed levels treating gamers to the early benefits of beta gameplay, it never felt exactly like Hitman to me. The levels just didn't feel right, and it was a bit too claustrophobic, and many times layers upon layers of security were occurring, with everyone just a bit too close for comfort. Enter Paris always massive but never confusing, it actually feels like a very tangible and real location. I may have dropped an F-bomb when I found a new secret or a hidden location or realized that a path doubled back on itself and I could have taken out a bad guy had I paid just a bit more attention. It's also incredibly varied, breaking both visual and gameplay lines as you pass from park to boat launch to inner dining area. Helicopter pads, basements, security levels, wine cellars, massive closed off attics, and a huge number of main entertainment rooms, both inside and outside solidify the location as a real place. I'm going to be honest, this just feels like a place where a prissy bastard and his hate-filled wife would live. The game also has a surprising amount of built-in verticality that feels more organic and structurally sound compared to a lot of titles where the only real high location is either with the cook smoke and weed or on a bell tower. Here, levels overlap, resulting in all manner of absolutely hilarious ways to kill people. Now, I can't give out some of the stuff in the challenges, but let's just say they are downright deplorable in their use of the locations and height, and it's this level design that so elegantly shines through regardless of the occasional technical issues with the frame rate. Now, last but not least, I gotta say this. While it's throwing a tremendous amount of lighting and effects around, it's the number of people displayed at once that does such a good job at filling out the universe of Hitman. Let's be honest, most but not all of Hitman's busier levels and past titles still felt like the party everyone knew about but most people missed. While the Paris level and its assorted locations are practically flooded with people. I mean, seriously, if someone bumps into someone else too hard, the entire group is going to have to go get plan B. Now, there is more good here than bad, and the title offers a surprisingly high-end look to the lowest of activities, which is, of course, killing people, even if the frame rate dances around more than I would like. Sound, music, and voice. Good job. Who set this up? Are retarded? I think we got some trouble. Stat report, go. Looking A-OK, -okay, sir. And of course, sound is up first. It's good, whether listening to the watery gurgles of a waiter's last breaths as you choke him out or hearing that wet snap of a screwdriver driving home into the off switch of enemy number 231. All the sounds are excellent, as is the use of various effects, handling reverb and reflection, resulting in rooms with mending soundscapes, 
overlapping one another. Walking in the rooms that are beside the fashion show elicited that dull throb of bass through walls that you expect from pissy neighbors and, well, fashion shows. Excellent sound throughout. Music. It's good. Hitman's always had fairly good music, and I would say that this fits the bill. Moody and ambient with a heavy use of synthesizers and throbbing style motifs, it reminds you that it's best to keep on your toes. It does a good job eliciting an inviting tension into the game space, especially when a body you thought you hid well is found by your enemies. Some will dislike these audio cues, and I can totally see that it makes sense. For me, though, I dug it and it added to the atmosphere. Good music overall. Voice. So yeah, this might be easily the best voice so far in a Hitman title to me, whether it's the startled sound of a security guard calling out for help over the radio. You can actually hear just a little bit of a warble in his voice of fright to the absolutely snide and horrible way people talk about their significant others when they're not in the room and when marriage is turned into a once a year hump contract. The voices are absolutely emotionally perfect and there's a metric shit ton of them. Everyone in this title is talking about everything around them and the amount of absorbing atmosphere atmospheric voice work is impressive. Here's what's really cool though. Listening to two people argue inside the muffled confines of a car or the reaction of a cameraman when I blocked his shot, almost everyone reacts to you being there. Not all the time, but enough that it feels like you're engaging in the world space. Too few titles these days think that recording a bunch of people reading the newspaper and saying rhubarb a ton of times works for ambient voice work. It doesn't, and Hitman seems to get that. Now, I'm not saying they react every time or react differently every time, but they react enough to make you feel like they see you gameplay. So if you didn't play the beta, the game starts you out shuttled through a fairly road assassination project and testing facility, allowing you to learn the tricks of the trade and setting you up for things like opportunities, which is this way of overhearing characters talking and using that information to possibly kill someone incognito or find another way to draw attention elsewhere. So the first tutorial levels are bog standard with the typical gameplay you might expect from smaller stealth titles. Fun, but been there, done that, and really just sort of reminding you that guns are a last resort and silent is indeed deadly. It's when you get to Paris, which you can do right from the start, by the way, if you choose to, where the rubber really meets the road here. You pick your starting location, weapons, and some special bits, and then you're off. And it's best to remember that this isn't about a massive grab bag of weapons. Most are well within the sphere of the fiction and relatively safe as choices go. So don't expect to be outfitting yourself with a damn law rocket. Now, the level in Paris alone has over 300 NPCs walking around, taking actions and doing their own thing. And it's your job to take out two high profile targets. And that is where the circle of gameplay here is so fulfilling. It's like the devs watched Rocky Balboa in his speech about getting hit and still moving forward. That's Agent 47. It's not about what's given to him at the starting. It's about what he does with the tools that he can find. And this world is a damn playground. Whether you're climbing drain pipes or pushing people over the edge of balconies or poisoning drinks to sabotaging an almost stunning array of items in the game world to turn them into little mini killers. The game is at its best when embracing that free form nature. As you're traveling amongst the partiers, opportunities present themselves and you can track them down using whatever factors they introduce to the level to get closer to your target or possibly take them out in one fell swoop. You can even take on small odd jobs so that you blend in more. Now, while I applaud the developer's efforts to do things like have Agent 47 mix drinks and other actions in that context, it's a bit like not noticing Kevin Nash is the one serving you at McDonald's, but it's a cool step in creating a fiction that's just a bit more believable. Here's the thing though, the game absolutely exudes Hitman, and your repertoire of life-ending devices may not be massive, but there's a very real excellence in execution here, especially in the way the game defines what you can do. Between your first bumbling encounters with various NPCs, you end up turning into this almost peaceful skater as you go through the level like everyone's moving in slow motion, but you're not. Duck into a room as security passes, come out, turn off the power so the staff has to come and fix it, knock one of them out, take their stuff, drop your killing items into a flower pot, get frisked by security go to the second level, and then have to think on your feet because now you ain't got shit. It is so surprising how few games can get this kind of thing right. Through all that, the one place where I think Hitman truly excels and shows the worth is once you beat the levels. For example, the game lets you unlock new locations to start a level in as well as disguises. This means the first time you play Paris as a level, you may not see more than one fourth of the locations depending on how you play and what you do. Now, instead of walking in through the front door, you can be uh, dressed as a temporary cook in the kitchen, which is in a totally different section and starts out differently. These two work in concert with challenges that get unlocked when you first beat the level the first time. 
higher difficulty situations, these challenges are somewhat spoilery to look at, and I want to make sure people know that. But I can say that one involves dropping one person onto the head of another. They're wicked, and mixed with both the new locations and disguises, the startings and all of this mixed together just makes for a really cool soup of repetition that actually doesn't feel boring. But you will see it at some point, but this thing's 15 bucks for the episode and it's massive. My first completed pass through was at around four hours and depending on your use of opportunities and the HUD that could be much longer or shorter. However, going back in and aiming for some of the new challenges completely changed my gameplay as what works in a normal style mission may not work at all when you're trying to get a challenge completed. And lastly, you have another couple modes like escalation mode, which is never increasing in difficulty mission type. That's basically the best of the development team's kills during missions. Then there's the elusive targets, which are in the missions but aren't the main target. They're real time and they don't stick around the level and you have to sort of find them listening to conversations and so forth. There's no hints about them. If you don't kill them, they're gone for good. One thing that mystifies me to no end is this switch to episodic. It's not really presented in the game as being that way, and so the atmosphere of the title doesn't do much to reflect this change at all. It's a small quibble, and most likely the devs are doing this so they can cultivate the gameplay across the levels if they end up running into issues, but it is really incredibly odd. Fun factor. It finally really does feel like they nailed the evolution of Hitman. The AI is good enough to present a challenge, and the various ways in which you play add their own challenges as well. As an old Hitman fan, I went from going through the beta thinking this might not be for me, to beating the Paris level twice and realizing that the repeating loop of challenges, ideas, and new starting opportunities was far larger than I originally thought and much more engaging. So I rate games on a buy, wait for sale, rent, or never touch it rating scale. Hey, at $14.99, this is a buy. The price to fund ratio is insane, and the length is perfect. If you're not a Hitman fan, I don't see this change in your mind, but why are you even listening to this review anyway? But if you're a fan of the Hitman titles, I don't see you having any problem whatsoever with this one. Very enjoyable.